If you have any questions, you should ask. But yesterday two persons asked so many questions, I wasted a lot of time with them and then they walked up. They were just uh, people sent by some guru or someone who was just trying to ask questions identified with some wrong gurus. And here are so many people sitting at your back who have been to all kinds of wrong gurus and we had to treat them and get them better. Some were suffering from epilepsy, some from cancer, some from this and some from that and they paid for it getting all these diseases and troubles. Some have ended up in the lunatic asylums. So I would request you, don't be identified with these gurus, even if you have paid, forget it. Doesn't matter, don't be identified with them, be identified with yourself. And this is your property, it's your own, you should know it. That's what is my humble request to all of you. May God bless you. Thank you very much. Any question? I've found some benefit in a Tibetan humming meditation known as Nada Brahma. Is this meditation compatible with Sahaja Yoga? Not at all. Not at all. You see, this Nada Brahma is what is the benefit one gets, is that you go on humming and humming like that and a day will come when your head will be humming all the time. Now I'll tell you the reason for that is like this. Supposing we say anything like uh, we start saying Om or Hum or anything, we do not become. Supposing I say I am the governor of this place, do I become? If I say, I am Om, do I become? By saying things, can we become something? If we profess something, do we become? Something has to happen within. Unless and until that happens, it has no meaning, it's all outside. You can say anything, somebody can say, I have some benefits because I have been saying prayers. That's not the thing. It's a complete transformation then you must have. And these are very dangerous things very, very dangerous because in the Tibet now, for example, Lama himself is a mess, I tell you, he's a big mess. I went to China with my husband and I was really amazed, you might call it a propaganda, whatever it is, to see in Lhasa this gentleman accumulated such wealth that it could be compared with the wealth of Pope. He used to take his wine in a full gold goblet which was all carved and he had number of them. His plate was made of gold, his everything was made of real gold. And from where did he get this money, imagine, from these Tibetans who were poor people. They are so poor, they have no clothes, nothing to cover themselves. I don't say communism is a very good thing, but what I say that these people really exploited them. The whole of that Lhasa exhibition was such an eye-opener, oh God, these people have looted these poor people and how much they have suffered. If you go and see now Tibet, you'll be amazed. The people don't know, they are so confused. They don't understand, they have given everything that they had to this Mr. Lama. He's touring now everywhere. No one knows what is he up to. What benefit can they give? It's a bit. The best benefit is that you become a master. You know each and everything. You know what is Kundalini, you know how to give realization other, and everything you must know. That's the main thing. In the beginning you do feel nice with anything, even with a drink. For a time being, in the same way, if you are humming somebody's name, you might get possessed for a while and you may feel all right. Like TM has the same problem. TM people do some mantras, for a time being they feel relaxed because somebody else comes into your mind, he takes over and he starts managing your show. And when he starts managing your show, feel relaxed. But relaxation is not the thing. You do not become a master. That's the point is, when you become one with the whole, then you are relaxed because nothing is exhausted. All the time you are relaxed. But see these lamas, how they look, all wrinkled, you know, you can count their wrinkles one by one. Horrible people. You cannot say that they have anything great about them. And what good have they done? I haven't seen any Lama doing any good to anyone. I had a chance of sitting next to this Dalai Lama once 
uh, in a dinner party when my husband was with the Prime Minister and uh, he was called and because Prime Minister's wife would not sit so I was sitting next to him and I felt so hot and the Prime Minister was Lal Bahadur Shastri and uh, he just he knew all about it, about me and he said, are you feeling very hot with him? Because he was a realized soul himself. I said, yes, terrible. He said, all right, then put the another uh, foreign minister in between. He made me sit on the other side and the foreign minister sat there. Till you are realized, you will not know. And also I must tell you, when you go to these people, it's difficult for you to get realization. That also is there. Because they create a problem within you. With any effort, you go on to sympathetic nervous system. Any effort, as I told you, you go to sympathetic nervous system. So your sympathetic gets activated. When your sympathetic gets activated, you either move to the left or to the right. When you move to the left, you go to the collective subconscious. That is the place which is all dead within us since our creation. And cancer, as I told you yesterday, is caused by the entities from that area. And if you go to the right side, most of these lamas put you on the right. Do you know Hitler was guided by lama? Dalai Lama was his guru. He taught him how to capture the minds of people and put them onto this kind of a thing. It's a well-known fact. It was Dalai Lama was his guru. All these lamas are like that. But when you are realized, then only you will know what they are. Like my granddaughter is, uh, was about five years, she's a realized soul. While my daughter and son-in-law were not realized souls. And once they went to Ladakh and the lama was sitting, you see, on a mount. And everybody was going and bowed to him. But she didn't like it. And when the parents went and bowed to him, she got very angry. She was only five years. She just put back her hands like this, stood before him. She said, by wearing this maxi, do you think you have become a realized soul? You are not. You have no business to ask people to bow before you. What business have you got? And they were so shocked and embarrassed, they said, don't say that. No, why did you bow to him? He's not to be bowed. Just imagine. But unless and until you are realized, also it's very difficult because they have a very nice uh, business propositions, they have very nice uh, advertising agencies. Like the other day I went to Spain, I was shocked. Uh, there's a, another thing these lamas have started that we have to go to Gobi Desert. Gobi Desert. Now imagine that Gobi Desert is a place where you go, f even one mile you'll be finished. For Nirvana you go to base Gobi Desert. So take all the money from the people, now they prepare nicely and take crowds of people to Gobi Desert, poor things are walking towards their death and they call it a nirvana, they never return. So they have gone to their nirvana, they are not returned. This is how they are working it out. I've had people in England, there was one fellow called Onkar, his name was given as Onkar by some, I don't know what Lama gave him that name because normally they don't have Onkar name. So I said, who gave you this name? He said, uh, I went to a monastery and what happened? All his bones were broken. He said, they beat me on my back. Just imagine, how can that be? All his bones were break, broken and it was impossible to give him realization because physically it was impossible but slowly and steadily he is now recovering. He is like a madman. How can you be cruel? So Tibetans, are they very realized souls, you think? What is there to learn from Tibetans? Anybody who is foreign need not be a learned personality. Whatever is written in the book need not be a scripture. You should understand that all these things have come up just after uh, Buddha's death. It has happened with every religion, with every great personality came on this earth, it has happened. But it is in the old caves, the saints who lived after Buddha have written that it is a spontaneous happening. But Buddha did not talk of God because he thought, first talk of the Self, because if you talk of God, people immediately start thinking they have become God. So better talk of Self. Let them get their Self-realization and less and until they get Self-realization, how will they understand God? So they are called, he's called as Anishwar, means he doesn't believe in God, an atheist. It's not so. He just deliberately did it because he thought, if you talk of something far-fetched, then people uh, live in an imaginary world. So what he wanted practically to have Self-realization first and then the knowledge about God.
because for a blind person, no use telling him about the whole thing before first tell him that you must have your vision. The other day we had one lady from Buddhist uh, meditation, she couldn't get her realization, I'm sorry to say, though we can work it out gradually, but she couldn't get it. Because, you see, Buddha resides within us on this side, here. And this is the portion gets very much swollen up when you do Buddhist meditation. And we have to reduce it with certain mantras, otherwise you cannot reduce it. One has to work hard for such people, doesn't matter. Because you are all seekers, it's your right to have it and I'm here to work for you. 